Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Thursday, September 15th planning board meeting. I'd like everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, introduction of board members. We have Paul Amatucci, Dave Andreessen, myself, Michael LaRue, Phil Roy, and Matt Henry. We have Jen McCabe, the code enforcement officer, and Tammy Bellman, the town planner. Um, first public comment, I'll open that up. All right, no one coming up. I'll close that. And the next is a public hearing. Site plan expansion amendment and conditional use, map 71, lot 10, 420 Portland Street, LLC. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. John Shagan from Lambert Engineering. <coughs> uh, representing uh, 420 LLC, uh, Jody Rogers and Jesse Cole are here, uh, operators and owners. This is an expansion of an existing uh, marijuana facility at the site. We were here last month presenting the project. The board scheduled the public, I mean, a site walk in this public hearing. So uh, the site walk um, occurred at 5 o'clock today. Uh, all the, all the uh, relevant uh, proposed site changes were staked out for you to view. Um, we have a... Uh, wastewater plan to hand out. Uh, that was the one thing you asked for. Uh, there was a concern about whether any of the process water in production was going to be going into the septic system and the applicants are going to be installing a separate containment tank that will um, handle that waste. This, a, if I may? Yep. This, we can hand this out. When, when your portion comes up in old business. Okay, not public yeah. hearing, got it. So, um, I guess we're here to say that we request you approve this tonight and we'll turn it over, and I guess at this point, and if, so if there's right somebody now, else what, in the public. Um, you just said your little thing, and then if there's anyone in the public that has any questions, now is that time. Okay. Mr. Chair, what time did you open it? Uh, it was 6.32. you got to slow down. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Move right along. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So no one came up. So I will close the public hearing. It is 6.35. Thank you. Okay. Next is approval of minutes for September 1st, 2022. Make a motion that we approve the minutes for the September 1st, 2022 meeting. I will second. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Moving into old business. First one is preliminary and final LRB leasing 115 Old Pine Hill Road subdivision amendment map U7 lot 47. So what are we voting on tonight with this? Okay. So we are. Would you like the abridged version, Mr. Chair? Yes. <laughs> LRB leasing is before you for preliminary and final approval. Um, if you look, take out in your packet the pa the information you got on the website from the website was a planner memo. It looks identical to what you've got for the findings of facts. I thought it was pretty silly to do two of them up. <coughs> so tonight you have the findings of facts sitting in front of you, and the back two pages have all the motions that would be need to be required <coughs> to approve the one lot additional four double G apartments, the revision to that subdivision. So you're going to do preliminary. You'll do final. You'll do the findings of facts and the waiver, if you so see fit. Is the waiver part of this, Tammy, or is that a separate yep. issue? No, the waiver is with it. The waiver affects, as part of the preliminary and final, they, sh they you need um, 
the information for what they are requesting the waiver for. And that has to do with, remember when we did the site walk, the 2,100 square feet that they were going to bring fill in, compact it, and this type of soil, the drainage would then change and become a much higher concentration of soil as opposed to a poor soil. It is now moderate to high. I checked the calculations. I checked the one page that has all of that information on it. And under and Ken Gardner signed right where the statement he made as opposed to providing an entire plan for it. They've got the one page with all of that information on it in the packet, which is still in the in their book. And Jay can probably show you, I think it's like one of the pages in there, and that's all there is, is Ken Gardner signed that, yep. I should say that I'm Jay Stevens with Civil Consultants, and, and we put the plan together for uh, less. What we did was we created a single sheet to show the area where the soil was being upgraded, and then all of the requirements that soil scientists had on what we had to do with this area to, to make it occur. So regarding that waiver, if you sign off on the waiver, I have requested under the conditions that those calculations be included on the final page that you will ultimately sign for that one lot under general notes <clears throat> and I believe you had had it there originally so now the new numbers will be there. <clears throat> You guys speak into the mic if you're going to say something. Yeah. And Just to <clears throat> remind you. Sheet one was, uh, C1 was the one that had all the calculations. Mm -hmm. And I believe. Even with these, the new numbers. And these include the new numbers yes. on this sheet. Okay. This is the one that you would ultimately decide. Yeah. Tammy, it's been some time since we did the site walk and, and we see a lot of stuff. But as I recall, uh, they exceed the minimum requirement, correct? Now they do, yes. They do, okay. Yes. And I, yep. So I would, I would just make sure we put it on the record that they have exceeded the minimum requirement. Uh, just, I don't want to set a precedence with waivers. If someone else comes and they, they are just at the requirement, I want to make sure we, we are going on the record saying they exceeded the minimum requirement. Yep. And, and based on that, I would make a motion to approve the waiver because they have exceeded the, the minimum requirement. Yep. I'll second that. <clears throat> okay, further discussion? Um, real quick, Les, this is Old Pine Hill Road North, correct? No, hi, Les Baldwell. No, Dave, this is uh, Pine Hill Road. Well, it, the property goes. It's on both, but it's Old Pine Hill the Road. Two. The new lot is sure. going to be on Pine Hill Road. Mm -hmm. Right. The okay. The other side is Old Pine Hill Road North. So your address that you're looking for is 115 Pine Hill Road, not Old Pine Hill Road. No, I'm sorry. It is 115 Old Pine Hill Road is the subdivision. The right. lot we're cutting off will be on Pine Hill Road. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they're one of the few lots that run from one road to the other, the entire right. length of that yep. distance. Okay. Anything else? Just making sure, because people don't know Old Pine Hill Road North, Old Pine Hill Road South. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So all in favor? Aye. Okay. So approve wa waiver. Then next is the preliminary subdivision approval. There's no outline issues to any. I haven't come up with any unless I missed something. I've been through this one with a fine truth comb, and Jay has been nice enough to send me everything. And I was able to cut his findings of facts down from 25 pages to 19 That's because of the information that he provided to us. So I'll make a motion. For a preliminary, subdiv pre preliminary subdivision approval. Okay. I will second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Moving right along. Fill you with a second? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And then final subdivision <laughs> approval. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Make a motion that we approve final subdivision approval. Okay. 
I'll second. Okay. All right. <laughs> For the Who discussion. Who was the second? <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's, For it's the discussion. Awesome. All in favor. Thank you. All right. And next is the findings of fact. Approved. Now, the findings of facts will have to be amended so I can put the names in that created the motions that did everything. <laughs> to include the waiver? Is that To include correct? the waiver and everything. Yep. yep. So do we want to come back to the findings of fact? No. You can approve them tonight as amended, knowing full well that those findings of facts that you have in front of you, mm -hmm. I will put the names in per the motions and then you will, Mike will come in and sign it and make sure I've got the right names in on the right lines. Okay, so and then would we be approving the findings of fact? As amended. As amended, okay, I'll make yep. a motion. Okay. I'll second the motion. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. okay. David, Matt, you did the second? Yep. Okay, thank you. All right, there's that, thank you. Thank you. The only thing that, that will need to come back, Jay, is the, the first page so they can sign it at the next meeting. Yep. And I'll, I'll have the originals all set and ready to go for you for the findings of facts also. So if you want to get me the plans, you won't have to be here and Les won't have to be here if you say it's okay for me to represent you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Wallace says yes. <laughs> Famous last words. It's always funny how they look at each other and then, uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. All, right. All right. Moving right along, we have site plan expansion amendment and conditional use map 71, lot 10, 420 Portland Street, LLC. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. John Shagman from Ambit Engineering. Um, so at the last meeting, I believe there was a couple of questions, but the most important question was the uh, wastewater and separating out any process flow from the septic system, which is going to be used uh, uh, just for um, bathroom waste for the uh, facility. The uh, applicant uh, did submit uh, via email a wastewater plan and it uh, incorporates using a bulk storage tank uh, to capture any of the waste in the uh, cultivation process, store it for uh, pumping and removal from the site so that that waste does not go into the septic system. Uh, we had a site walk. If there are any questions from the site walk, we'd be glad to answer them. The um, application did include <coughs> a scale waiver uh, for the plan set, so we would need a, a vote on the waiver before you could uh, uh, vote any other uh, vote approvals or any other things. And um, can, you, can you describe for us what that waiver is? Sure. In a little bit more detail. Yep. Yeah, they so did, the waiver is. Unfortunately, they did not get the form that we now use, like Jay had, because they came in after their application, so he didn't get it. Okay. So, and that's fine. It's okay. Okay. So in the packet is a letter that we request that the Planning Board grant a waiver to the Town of Berwick's Land Use Ordinance, Article 9, Section 9.8, Conditional Use Permits and Site Plan Review, Section F2B, to allow the applicant to prepare a map at a scale of lot not less than one inch to 40 feet. So uh, basically the, the plan scale is 50 feet and you require not less than one inch equals 40 feet. So uh, unfortunately a 40 scale would not fit. So we did a plan set at 50 scale. We bumped up the plan scale in the set for the grading to show more detail to 30 scale, uh, I'm pretty sure. So uh, that's the waiver request. Uh, answer Does that, that waiver create any undue hardship for code or zoning? Not for not. me. And from what I saw at the sidewalk and we looked at the plan, it, it was perfectly readable and legible, so I have no issue with it. Make a motion to approve that. I'll, I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Okay. 
potential. <laughs> uh, is this the time for questions? Yeah, yeah, yep. Jenny, maybe you can answer this. I know it came up during the site walk, but uh, any feedback from the fire chief on the road and the setback? The building was right on top of the road. I just want to make sure the fire chief is comfortable to get get apparatus back there to protect their property, but to protect public safety as well. Tammy, did you receive a letter from Chief Plant over this? Okay. Let me reach out. No. Um, let me ask him. There was something about the beginning of the road being okay. I don't know where the where it comes like in the middle there, where it kind of does this. Yeah. I need to ask him because I'm not sure. My, my only concern on the site walk, and it's for protection of your property and, and public safety, as we said, is when you get down towards the end of that road where your building comes out on the paved edge, that other side of that road look, appears to be very soft. And, and if he had to get a big apparatus back there, we, don't, we clearly don't want them getting stuck, putting themselves in harm's way. and not be able to respond to your property if you had an emergency at your property. So just can we make that a condition for approval and approve it based on the fire chief's input? Is that appropriate so we're not holding them up? Why don't we have the fire chief's letter? I'm not sure. Was he reached out to? I <laughs> believe he was because I believe the application had the letter where they originally reached out to Okay, him. I'll, I'll reach out to him. Yeah, I would. I, I did reach out to him. Yeah. I I reached out to the fire chief probably six weeks ago, and didn't hear back. If but you just state your name for the record. Jody Rogers, owner of the property and the project. Um, there is room to move that road further to the south. I guess it is if we need more space by that. Yeah, building. you guys showed us those extra stakes yeah, so that we've it could we've go got even room further. To yeah. Put in okay. what we need there. I, I'd like right. to make In a fact, the plan shows that we're going to add width to the road, so Still it'll be appropriately. I, I um, would like to make a motion to yep. approve conditionally Thank with you. with the fire chief's uh, input on on the road width, so he can get an apparatus back there. <clears throat> I will second that so, motion. So that motion is to approve the site plan expansion with the condition, with the condition of okay. the fire chief's <laughs> approval. Okay. And Dave seconds. All right. Further discussion. All in favor. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. I guess and that's it, right? Conditional use approval. Oh, sorry. Hold on a second, Jen. Yep. Did you have anything? I think it might be too late for what I was going to say. Keep going. Did, if you have a concern, Jen, I'd say. No, it, so late. now there's another thing for a conditional use approval for the cannabis uses? Correct. They technically don't have the approval of the planning board because the they were doing both use? of them together. Okay. Correct. And that's how they've come forward from the beginning, had all of the conditional uses. They are the last ones for the permitting here in Berwick. Right. They so hold a license for both, correct? Correct. Yes. And they're all listed, Mike, if you and if you look at your the sheet I made up for you, yep. they are all listed there. So if you were to say to the board that you're looking for a motion to include someone instead of repeating it all could say so moved if they agree with everything that you said can you say that again I'm yeah. sorry yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Mike will need to read the motion that I wrote up for him or if he wants it changed he can change it of course no, I'll just read it and then somebody can say so moved and somebody else can second it can I say something before you start? Yep. Um, it might be too late for this, but um, part of there's a couple there's a couple different things. Um, one, I don't, I don't know. Uh, so the holding tank, mm -hmm. I, I just want to see a picture of it. And two, um, they need to submit on behalf of their application too. They need to submit a schedule of pumpings for their subsurface wastewater disposal system. Can be put in their findings of facts. That's fine. Um, and they also need to um, submit a schedule of pumpings for that holding tank as well. And they have to the submit that to code. And, and yep. Yep. Okay. And they have to submit it to code and um, like. And that would be on the findings of fact for conditions for I that. I think so. Yeah. Part of your Did conditions. We make that for I thought at the last time they came before the board, we made that a requirement. I'm pretty sure we did. It's fine, but it's it's a requirement that they have to do anyway. But I just yeah. want to make yeah. it, every time something like this comes up, yeah. I mm -hmm. just want to make sure it's on the record that they need to do it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Did I just want to clarify, we, we did get that information from them or we did not? 
Uh, Jody sent me today a news picture of the holding tanks and the information on it because you had questions last time. So if you allow Jody to hand you that information, you can see it right now. Because she be was going to give it to you during yep. the public hearing. Okay. Does that include a schedule of how often they need to be pumped uh, in? You've no, set I up pumping. I did not bring a copy of the change of the wastewater um, okay. operation plan. Okay. Uh, Can you just email right. it over? Yeah, she emailed oh, it to email planning, it. and the oh, you did. thing that yeah, she okay. emailed over on, talked about the. Okay. Uh, Can I just see it? Yeah. Yeah. Give her this one. Now Sorry, I, I know with previous conditions we haven't set it to a time. It's just been whenever that's full, yep. it has to get a sample tested, and then it can get emptied, and there just has to have a log with it. That is true. Okay. Is this something we? I thought we had discussed having a contract in place to. Did we? Did we you mentioned that? that it was going to be required. So okay. before before the applicant gets a, a building permit or a CO, that that would be required. So you did Correct. mention that to us. And, yep. and that has with been the, recorded as a requirement. Yeah. With Damn. with the waste. Yeah, I'll put it in here. Okay. So can I ask a question? Of course. Jody, can you go up to the mic because you might know the answer to this. Mm -hmm. Um. So in here it states, do you guys have this piece of paper? I should have made a copy and I didn't, sorry. No. So in this piece of paper it states that um, it says... You gotta go to the mic. I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give you this piece okay. of paper. It says, um, under current growing methods, this capacity will cover projected wastewater for three weeks. Now is that three weeks only when... We talked about this before. I'm gonna give you this. Okay. Thank you. Is that three weeks only when you wash down it, or is this going to is this tank going to be pumped every three weeks all year long? Like, how does it work? Our our approach would be to schedule pumping every three weeks throughout the whole oh, year. Wow. Throughout the whole year, as okay. long as we don't have any interruptions in our cultivation schedule. Okay. Um, but it will be set up so that if something were to change in the way that we're growing, right now we do soil, we water every couple of days, we essentially have no runoff. So this is basically table wash down, which really should be chemical laden, but we will capture it anyway and get it pumped. But um, there'll be the, the tank is going to be inside the building, uh, which is where we filter everything now. So if we change something and that um, volume changes, then we can do that as well. But I would like to say that if it turns out we don't even need to have it pumped every three weeks, like we essentially have very, very little runoff. So um, I, I, I'm happy to set up a three-week pumping schedule if you want to specifically see that, but I'm... Nope. We don't even need to see it. We just need to know that you know what you're up against and you keep a log yes. with the company that you... Um, do business with or for yourself that if we ever requested it you could get it printed off and sent right over okay my other question to you is it doesn't list in here how often you need to um, have your field pumped so how often will you be doing that our our tank yeah yep you know we'd like your subsurface I mean I yeah I know two or three years is standard I mean yes it is but I wasn't sure if this was different it, there, there's nothing different. about this. It's pretty much just. Can you submit that in writing just to uh, Tammy so she has it? Sure. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. That's all okay. I have. Good. Do you guys have anything? Questions about it? No. So this motion would be to approve the conditional uses for an adult use storefront, adult use cultivation and or manufacturing facility, cannabis caregiver retail store dispensary, and medical cannabis cultivation and or manufacturing facility for 420 Portland Street. Would make a motion to approve with conditions as recorded this evening. I'll second that motion. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving right along. We have final approval for both buildings, James Chandler, 420 School Street, tax map R54, lot 15, building B and C, amendments, and building D. Yeah, my name's James Chandler. I own property on 420 School Street, 
and I'm looking for the permit for building B and building D. Yep. If I may, Mr. Chair. Yes, Tammy. A site visit has was done last week, I believe, mm -hmm. by the fire chief, Jenny, the code enforcement officer, and myself regarding building B, C, and D. Building D is all set to be approved. Jenny was able to issue the CO on that. It is in the file. If you would really like a copy, I can get you one. Not a problem. And as far as building B and C go, they would like to put a hold on building C because they're having contractor issues to be able to come in and finish the paint booth. So building C will not be approved and there will be no painting done at that location until that paint booth is completed. The applicant knows it and the contractor that's working inside, the gentleman that's leasing it. As far as building B, they would like to take and add an organic, all I can think of is an organic detailing practice because they use all green chemicals when they wash the vehicle and clean the inside. So to me it's an organic type of system because they are very nature and child safety and everything. Biodegradable. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those are the words. Yeah. And it would only be done while the children are in school because that was the first thing I asked, how many vehicles will be done during the day? And they said it would be at max one per day because when she does her detailing, as you know, when you detail your car, it's mine would be five hours in length. I have a dog. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be like one a day. And if that was to change, the folks that are leasing building three, building B will take and come and talk to me about coming back to see you. Was that the other business that had the... That's the, the automotive. When we were there yes. for the site walk. Okay. And that... They were the one in the front. Correct. Okay. Is no, that issue resolved to your satisfaction? Yes, it is. Okay. Wasn't there an egress door issue as well? No, that's, that's, the all, that's done now. That's okay. It's all set. Yeah. Site's been cleaned up. Remember, we asked for a few. Yeah. Right. It looks right. good over there. Okay. Code's happy. I'm happy. Okay. <laughs> so is it building C that we want a table? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for approval on D. And B. Yep. D and yeah. B. D and B. But you're going to want to make separate motions because there are two different people leasing and uses in these structures. Mm -hmm. So this way, if anything happens with one, it doesn't affect the other. Mm -hmm. So if you can make separate motions, probably pretty close to the same word is, you'd be able to do that. So we're looking for a motion for conditional use of buildings D and C? No, Correct. B and D or? B and D, but B separately. And D. B, and B and D separately. And D separately. So the first one would be the approval of building B conditional use with the addition of Amanda's detailing located also in building B. Right. So I'll make that motion. A second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? All right. So building C, should we vote to table that? Yes. Okay, so I make a motion that we table building C. I will second that. Oh. Okay, Go Dave, ahead. Dave, Go ahead, Dave got that. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Dave, you seconded? I did. Thank you. Okay, and then the approval of conditional use on building D. Building D was, was what again? The diesel mechanic. The diesel mechanic. It was the building yeah. that sat out behind with the D door. for diesel. Yeah. <laughs> were, were you pleased with, I remember there were storage tanks. Um, it's all cleaned up. That trade litter is all yep. good to go. Looks okay. good. Okay. Yeah. I will make a motion to uh, approve. I'll second the motion. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. That's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving right along, we have village overlay yep. request to include Bell Street from Jordan line. Street to Rollins, Rollins Street, Street and George Street okay. from Sawmill Hill Road to Lyman Street. Jerry Latart, Brian Harrington. 
I have a sawmill hill. Not sawmill hill road. There's no road in sawmill hill. It's just the hill? It's just a hill. Just a sawmill hill, hill. okay. There's no, there's no road in it. It's not a road, just a hill. <laughs> just a hill, okay. There hasn't been a sawmill in a long time. <laughs> exactly. Uh, attorney Brian Barrington, Coolidge Law Firm. I've been a member of the main bar now for, uh, I counted, 35 years. Um, I've had an extensive practice in Berwick, and my office is right over the bridge. Um, the Village Overlay District, the reason we're here is because it doesn't require the 10,000 square feet per unit. Um, so it really has to do with, with density. And, you know, when you look at the Village Overlay District, you see that, what, a third, 25% of it is where the prime tanning operations were, probably more. And what the town of Berwick is trying to do now is to put the heart back into your city. And you've now approved and you're going forward with, um, with commercial shops and some um, commercial use in the center of the projects. And very few of the multifamily housing that already exists in the town is actually within the district that allows the higher density. Now, in our past, we all were afraid of multi-units because it would put pressure on the school system. But nobody's having babies. And the schools are now underpopulated and underused because they don't have enough families going in there. The other thing you hear about multifamilies is that it brings in more density and undesirable people. New homes don't. What you have here and other places is you have warehouses that have been sitting there empty for years. Um, if you build new construction up to modern code, these units, particularly that brought us here on 10 Bell Street, he spent to me was just staggering. He spent $10,000 to have A.G. Guadano Architects architect out and design, you know, the units. He is, and that's what happens with, with new construction. You're putting in nice units. Nice new units attract nice people for the community. Um, and we want to put the pedestrians back in town. Uh, it's funny, across the river when I walk home with my suit on from my office to my home on the hill, I always feel everybody figures I'm an evangelist because no one else wears a suit in town. But it, it, it'd be nice to have people walking around. Um, and you have a commercial industrial district there, which kind of reflected the old town, but that's not where the new town is. Um, so workforce housing requires an increase in supply. And we all know that zoning is the number one reason for the lack of affordable housing as it pressures things out. Um, last year, you expanded upon School Street. Um, and I was a political science major back at Tufts <laughs> 39, 40, 42 years ago. And, and, and from a, an urban planning perspective, um, you want to allow some people in your, in your, in your district, and um, the only way you're really going to allow to do that is to expand the village overlay district, which has less onerous requirements for size in the center of your town. Um, Jerry Letarte could just spin this off, um, but he's put his heart and soul into it. We, know we don't need to go in the sob story about how he missed all the deadlines because of COVID. Because your job is you guys are the vision of how the downtown of Berwick should be. And that's why we're asking for this expansion. Okay. So based on this, we will... Uh, you make a uh, recommendation to the selectmen. We, that's and right. It, goes, it has to go to the selectmen to the anyway, and then it goes on the ballot. Tammy, has this gone to public uh, notice or public comment? Should it? It will need to once you get all of your ordinance changes in line for the June ballot. We're behind the November ballot. We had to have all of the information to the warrant in August for the November ballot. So this will make it to the June ballot because we have to start working on anything else that 
ordinance changes that are coming forward from anyone. This may be the only one, which would make it nice and easy. So you're looking at the June ballot, just as long as you understand that. Because they've got a, you guys will have to, the planning board will have to have a public hearing on this. And then if you opt to recommend it to go to the board of the select board, they will also have to have a public hearing on it. So. Okay. Um, one thing I'd like to bring up is the comp plan is still getting updated and changed. So what I would like to see is we should talk with the comp plan committee and just verify that this is something that the comp it, it's going to go and abide by the comp plan. Um, with that, after that, I would say then we could discuss it mm -hmm. and move forward. Agreed. I will warn you that Jerry is one of these snow goose that goes south. He doesn't seem to like snow anymore. I love it. So <laughs> if you had any specific questions for Jerry, he's I do. Are you a resident of Berwick? He needs to come to that. Mike. Come on over. Tell him how long you've had units here. He's not a resident. He's actually in Summersworth. No. But he's sorry. had a long history in Berwick. Go ahead. That's my, my wife's side. We all, they all come from Berwick. I, uh, I'm pretty well tied in with, with the folks here in Berwick. Uh, but my home is in Summersworth. Do you own any property in Berwick? Pardon me? Do you own any property? <laughs> I guess so. A lot of property in Berwick. How many got? Ten units? I got about uh, about ten buildings, ten, ten, ten locations. Okay, that's all I was asking. No. Yeah. No, well, they I, have I, I, I he like sold Berwick. one of his buildings recently, and he's taking the profits from that to put it back into Bell Street instead of just giving yeah. it to his kids. And on Pine Hill, <laughs> I'm, uh, right now we're, we're putting that one together. And okay. it's looking nice down there. Yeah. Okay. So are we looking for a conditional approval? No, 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 okay. we're not. We're, that's it. Okay, that's we're, it. We're gonna wait. Yep, so, got it. Yep, yep. So review with the comp plan committee. Okay, so the comp thank you. Plan is doing. Yep, just thank, information. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Terry, All right. I just wanted to point out before so it doesn't have to be amended later on the planning board agenda for this evening. Uh, attorney Barrington, it, it's with a B, not an H, oh. as we have it on there. So just so we record it appropriately. Yep. I Barrister Barrington. I will change it for you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. No new business. So next is the second public comment. Seeing no one else here, I'll close the public comment and in back into informational items. All righty. Good night. Good night. Thank Good night. you. Thanks. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye, Jerry. I just have a couple of nice pieces of information. Bad Wolf, Butcher, and Delhi, yes, tomorrow. has received their CO. Nice. So that means they are, <laughs> they can open. I did, I, Corner Allison point. posted like six things on Facebook today. She's going crazy. She's so <laughs> excited. So I think, yeah, if we're on Facebook, follow those guys. Yeah. <laughs> and Corner Point also earned their CO. Nice. Oh, nice. So with the expansion that they did that you allowed them to do, they have fulfilled. That's great. So that the expansion is open now? Yep. It's not open. It's not oh, they receive CO. They have a few more things to do, but they'll be opening shortly. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Nice. It, yeah is. Not, it looks nice in there. Awesome. He's not open yet. So that, that's the good news I wanted to give you. I don't have any bad news. No bad news? No bad news. No bad news. <laughs> no. This is a great <laughs> meeting. <laughs> how, about, how about Mint? They're already they? open. Yeah, they're, they're yeah, the already, gym's already yeah. open. Yep. Full gym's already open. business. Yeah, yep. wow. they're going. Fantastic. We're yeah. awesome. to Facebook. Yeah. Good news. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing else has come forward yet. They're doing a lot of site work over there currently. I noticed they cleaned up all of the debris and they've got new fill hauled in. It looked uh, it's looking good over there. It looks yeah. really good. It's it's not so much new fill. If you watch the process during the day, they've got an unbelievable processing to take the big rocks and make them small. I call it a grinder, but I know that's not the technical name for it. Pulverizer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I think I'll have to get a hold of Steve Cantwell to let to fill me in on the proper terminology here. But yeah, they're going gangbusters with getting rid of those mounds and breaking it down, mm -hmm. and virtually no dust. Mm -hmm. it, it it's good. crazy. 
You'd with the, how far else. some of this equipment has come. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really moving along. That's great. Well, if there are no uh, further items for consideration from the esteemed Burgess meeting room in the depths of the Berwick Town Hall, I would like to make a motion to adjourn. I will second that. And Good. as further discussion, I wanted to beat you to it. I'm sorry. I'll let you I wanted to beat you to I'll it. I'll let you have it next time. This is sorry. the fourth meeting that you've done. That. Sorry, brother. I'm not going to steal your thunder next time. <laughs> All right. All in favor? All right. All right. Thank you. Good night. Sorry, Dave.